office environment my entire career. And then overnight, I've been stuck in my kitchen, in my basement, in my garage for nine months, right? We as leaders should first off recognize, hey, there could be some issues here. Let's not hide them. Let's be real. Let's address them. And, and I think that all of us work at great companies that have resources. And so I think the first thing that we need to do as leaders is, hey, mental health is real. Um, COVID has made us rethink a lot of things. Um, let's at least acknowledge it and recognize it. And then what can you and I do personally for ourselves to mitigate the negative effects of any kind of, of, of work from home impact, right? That's just a bit of insights we'll explore today with John Pierce, head of business development for Cetera. John and I sat down to chat about the changes brought about by COVID-19 and how firms like Cetera dealt with the challenges and continue to support their advisors. Stick around. Our conversation is coming up in just a second. Thanks everyone for joining us. I'm Jeff Crosby, founder and CEO of 3X Equity. And our guest today is John Pierce. Some of you might know John as the head of business development for Cetera. In addition to John's role, he's a frequent contributor to Forbes. Recently, he's written several articles for Forbes and the impact of COVID and how that's made independence a reality for many advisors. I want to have today to dig deeper on that topic, to give us some, some examples and perhaps some suggestions on how advisors can keep up their momentum and what it looks like will be maybe another impacted year due to COVID. We'll touch on a number of topics because I know one thing about John, he has a breadth of knowledge. He's been around the industry a long time and with different firms. There isn't much that he isn't an expert on or can't at least give us a good, strong opinion. So without further ado, I want to welcome John Pierce with a question at the heart of this episode. What has COVID changed in terms of advisors and our practices? Let's first start with the positives. What are some positives about working from home? What is, how's that changed um, the direction and how could someone take advantage of that? Yeah, absolutely. Great, great question. Um, well, let, let, let's, let's address the fact that, that we, a lot of us have eliminated 20, 30 hour long commutes twice a day, right? And so um, the, the, the beauty of not having commute time is um, the ability to spend more time with our family and friends. And so I have, I have team members that have just embraced the fact that they've gotten to see their grade school kids grow up a little bit or they got to spend time with their infant um, and that they, they, they truly have, have connected better with um, their, their children or their partner or their spouse. And so um, I would say that, that we're not used to the normal um, um, you know, go-to-work environment. We come home and we're, we're, we're at home and then, okay, I can, I can spend more time outside uh, earlier or later in the day versus being in the car. I, I get to spend more time with family or friends. Um, I can do other things. Like we've been, I think um, working from home, um, Jeff, allows us to be more intentional. Uh, it allows us to be more reflective. Um, and, and I know when we think about business planning, um, you know, we think about business planning, but COVID and working from home has also allowed us to kind of think about ourselves. Firstly, what are we going to do to work on ourselves? And so I know you do things personally. I, I've made like three concentrated activities that I'm doing um, in response to uh, COVID, you know, to help me personally. I think we all have had reflective time to think about, okay, um, how do I be a better person? How do we interact better with our teammates? How do I, how do I drive more quality business? However you think about it, um, this has given us more time to reflect. And so spending time with family members and friends, um, having more reflective time, having more time outside, I think are all positives um, uh, from the work from home environment. Having spent more time with family and 
environment. How do you spend more time with family and friends if you don't go see them or in that situation? That's exactly right, Jeff. Yeah. So, so, you know, you hit the nail on the head. Um, we cannot be trapped in a Zoom, in a Teams um, world. Um, that we have to force ourselves to take a break, right? And, and so uh, I, I mentioned being intentional. You know, I, I, I take 30 minutes at the start of my day to read something that is not work-related to level set my day. I force myself um, to take a break midday. Um, I force myself when I leave my workspace to turn my technology off. And so um, part of the problem with work from home is that we're working too much. And so you and I as leaders, um, as team leaders, you know, we need to make sure that we unplug um, uh, and we, make sure, we have to make sure that our team members unplug. Because if, to your point, if we don't unplug, all we're doing is just working more. How do we unplug? Okay, so this is, this is something as an advisor, I feel like until I officially retire, I mean, where I can float the Grand Canyon, sail around the world, I'm always going to have to be plugged into the business because I feel like that we have that responsibility to our clients. So in this environment, while we're still working, how does someone practically unplug? So um, while I understand exactly what you said, um, you and I both know that we have to master the art uh, of going from a 10 to a 7. Um, we have to be able to go at 7 so that when we need to go to 10, we can go to 10. We cannot physically, mentally, emotionally be at a 10 all the time, right? It's, you're going to burn out. And then you're going to do your clients a disservice. And so um, I'm very intentional. Um, I, I, I um, on Wednesday mornings, I take two hours in the morning and I block my calendar and I do not put anything on that calendar. I don't let anyone interfere with that sacred time in the middle of the week. Um, I force myself to get up from my workspace for 15 minutes every three or four hours. Well, what, what do you do during those two hours? What are, what are some things you do in the, during those two hours? So, um, I, I, I try to get in a workout, right? So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going on my bike for 40 miles, but I'm, I'm trying to get up my heart rate, right? So um, all of the longitudinal studies have shown that um, you need to work out, you need to eat healthy. But the, the real studies have shown that if you get your heart rate up five to seven minutes a day on a consistent basis, you're going to live longer than anybody else, right? And so you and I are long distance athletes. Um, I, I force myself to make sure I get my heart rate up um, above where I normally am every single day because that's going to expand my lifespan um, but also makes me feel better and feet, makes me healthy so work out um, i try to read something that is not business oriented that might teach me something different because um, we need to we, we need to have you know diversity of thought and opinion and, and i feel like we've become such a fragmented society that it's good to to, to read other people's works and views um, you know I'll take the dog for a walk. Um, you know, I, I will, I, I think the issue, Jeff, is you need to be personally disciplined to unplug. And so maybe that means, Jeff, you know, when you take off 20 minutes, you, 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 you leave the phone in your office and don't get jitters about it, right? Be okay with not having jitters. Um, and, and I, I wonder, really I wonder, hold on. So I wonder, I wonder if that's, when I broke in my phone because I, 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 I it dropped out of my jersey on a bike ride and I can't use my phone, I have to go and get a new phone. It strikes me that all of a sudden when I can't use my phone because it functionally doesn't work, how ironically in some ways I feel better, right? And I was forced to, to unplug, which you're is what you're free. saying. Yeah, you're free. You, you freed yourself and, and you're like, wow, this is kind of nice. You freed yourself. And then yeah. by freeing yourself mentally, like in your studies and whatnot, what does freeing yourself mentally do? How does that recharge someone's soul and mind? What does that physiologically do, in which ultimately we want to be a better person, which ultimately helps us become a better advisor? But what does that physiologically within our brain do when, it, when we're freed like that? Well, you know, um, you know that when you have a really good night's sleep, you function better. Right, you know that um, 
when you can turn your brain off, which is my biggest, uh, probably you too. We, like, we have a hard time turning our brain off. We have to really work to turn our brain off. But when we turn our brain off, um, we, we actually have the ability to, to get the nail on the head. You just recharge. You feel better. You interact better with your colleagues. You interact better with your clients. You interact better with your loved ones where, you know, again, it, it, it's kind of a 10 and 7 thing. We have to figure out how do you operate at a 7 so that you can operate at a 10 when you need to because if we just operate at 10 constantly, we're, we're, we're actually doing everyone a disservice, including our clients and our recruits and our prospects. So, you know, I think it's more a function of you need to be reflective and everyone listening where, what activities make you happy? What activities allow you to um, put a smile on your face and, and to recharge? And, and I find that, you know, if I don't get enough sleep, that's a problem. I have to, I, I need to make sure I get my sleep. Um, and, and I know that if I try to do 14 hours straight of Zoom days, um, by the end of that day, um, I am not um, operating uh, as well as I should be, you know, for my, my, my team or my clients or my prospects. So I'm going to go back to that example, that advisor who sent flowers to his employee's wife, you know, in that situation, and who do I think probably felt as good or even better than everyone is the advisor, the advisor that sent that flower because he saw the reaction out of, you know, the person that received. Sometimes when we, when we give, we actually, we receive more than the person who benefited from the gift that we gave. So just thinking about, you know, recharging mentally. Um, and it was actually, so as advisors out there are people, when we do something for others, we benefit probably more than the person that we, we gave to. Um, so you're talking about being healthy, being whole. I know not everyone can work out like you, John, but I imagine if you could give everyone a happy pill, you'd probably say, hey, walk every other day, get some exercise, because you know how much exercise, being fit, eating well, drinking well, does for you and your job, because you got a hard job, you've been on the road, and let, and, but yet you pay yourself first by feeling good. And, and, and to me, the, the, it's always the, the benefit of how you feel is greater than the cost, the effort to go do what you do, the walking, the being the discipline. So let me change subjects a little bit, go direction. John, how did we all become independent in this environment? How is a W-2 advisor? Talk about that. Yeah, well, look, I, I um, it, and again, um, I, I don't know the last time we had a really seminal event, um, you and me, Jeff, in our industry. You know, I, I, I know exactly where I was on 9-11. I, w- I was in downtown Philly, running Philadelphia for Merrill Lynch. Um, and I remember going back to South Jersey and there's no planes. And I'm like, wow. Um, uh, th- that's the last really major event where I, 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 we were sh- shaken to our core, right? And, and um, you know, the unintended consequence of this was that overnight everyone was shut down. Um, and, and so you had to go home. Um, you had to use your Comcast or Xfinity or whatever your, your cable provider is. You had to use your laptop. Um, you know, you're working from your space. Um, you're learning how to VPN in and, and then you, you, you wake up one morning and you're like, wow. Um, you know, I, 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 I have to operate, on my own island until I, uh, until my company kind of figures this stuff out. And, um, you know, I'm not sure when we'll all ever go back full time to our workspaces, but, you know, in March, um, people started to realize that, wow, I'm, I'm paying 40, 50, 60% of my revenue for the bricks and mortar in the infrastructure that I thought I needed. And then they realized, wow, I really don't need all that stuff. Right, we need community, um, and, and we need technology to function properly. But with the rollout and the advent of new technologies, we're actually communicating more with our clients. We're seeing them more via, you know, Zoom or Microsoft Teams. We're, we're actually um, um, doing doing more activity in a COVID environment, um, and we're not being in the brick and mortar. Uh, and, and so, I, I think what happened was. And I think we've all seen this, you know, the numbers are the numbers. Like you and I are data geeks and we love data. Um, and, and in 8, 9, 10, you know, the vast majority of the moves um, by recruits were in the independent channel. And that's starting to play out 
in 2021 and probably through 23. The only difference is you're going to see a greater propensity to truly look at independents because they're operating in a in an independent environment, and some of them are just having to pay 50 cents of a dollar for for overhead, right? So let's talk about that. So you you know the W two space. You've been in the independent space. Why Satera? So Satera's got one of the best independent broker dealers out there. You went to Satera. They pulled you in. You know it's good to be wanted. Congratulations. You're in high demand. So talk a little bit about. Um, the Satera value proposition, and maybe even weave that into a little bit of the private equity. But go ahead. Yeah. So, so look, um, it, you're right. You know, I spent the vast majority of my career at Merrill Lynch in Ameriprise, and, and I have dear friends at both firms, and both were publicly traded. Um, and so, this was my first exposure to private equity, um, and, and I was a novice. Um, and so um, I, had the, I, I had the great fortune of sitting down with Adam, our CEO of Satera Financial Group, um, before the pandemic hit in the city. And we spent a couple hours really going deep on private equity and in specific Genstar, our owner. You know, Satera um, went through some hard times um, and the prior owner, not Satera, went bankrupt. Um, and, and we interviewed 32 different private equity firms and, and selected Genstar. And so um, I, I am so thrilled to have them as a partner um, for the capital they provided for our tech stack, for business consulting, practice acquisitions, marketing, SEO, you know, you name it. Um, they're a growth driver. And then more importantly, the capital that they provided me and our team uh, for recruits that have the right type of business. And so, Jeff, you and I know that, that um, there's a lot of people that are, dialing for dollars in their kitchen, in their underwear, and they send all their, all their leads to one firm. Um, and and they, send, they tend to say, oh, your private equity it with a broad brush. Well, what I found is that not having to deal with the quarterly earnings grind um, with private equity is really positive. And the, the, the money that GenStar has provided for growth has been a breath of fresh air. And, and that's shown up last week, actually, Moody's, um, upgraded Satera's debt um, for three reasons. Um, they, they said, number one, our reaction to COVID was stellar, um, and we rolled out the resiliency pack that really helped our clients and our advisors and, and, and their teams. Um, our retention has gone through the roof, um, so retention is increasing month over month. And then our recruiting success, as, as you know, is starting to take effect. We had a really good December. Um, we have a really good first and second quarter lined up. And so... I think the people that badmouth private equity aren't like you that never actually created wealth. They don't get it. Wealth, how wealth creation happens. And I'm going to stop you for a second because um, I'm going to talk a bit about that. Uh, I've got a wonderful spouse. And if she, if I had to be accountable to her before the fact and every investment decision I made, we wouldn't have what we have today. And so um, it's, it's been great that I'm not having to answer to shareholders, i.e. my wife, you know, ultimately. She's, she bets on the jockey, me, and it's really allowed me to make good business decisions for our family. And I could see in a publicly traded firm where that's a lot different than a private equity firm, that you don't have to answer to shareholders and you are able to take losses in certain areas or you're able to invest in areas that maybe you couldn't do that if you're a publicly traded firm. So I can relate that to 3X equity. She would have said no to 3X equity probably. And it's turned out to be a great business decision. I love what I do. Um, so um, what I'm going to do is before I'm going to ask you if you could share the value proposition of Sutera, the different platforms that you yeah. have, because yeah. one of the things I think make unique. But before we do that, I'm going to ask Mark on my team, my technology team, is what we want to do is we want to just put one question up there to the audience to help us understand where do you get your information from um, when you go out and you're looking for Who's offering what? What does this broker dealer do? Um, what would I get paid if I was to move to one broker dealer so, or whatever there is in the inf in, in, in industry? Where do you typically go to get information? If you could just check mark the box or boxes, that would be great. And it helps us kind of steer our information um, going forward. 
I love the analogy of Ben and the jockey. You're, you're, you're exactly right, Jeff, right? I mean, it, it, um, you, you think long-term, right? You think long-term. I mean, it's taken 3X equity a while to make some money. Um, and, you know, and that's what happens when, uh, you know, when you believe Microsoft didn't make any money for 20 years, you know, till the cloud and they stayed at it, they stayed at it. So, um, okay, Mark, you can drop that off now. So, so, let me, uh, so yeah, the value proposition, yeah. I think it's very, very unique. There's different platforms one can. Yeah. Um, I, I think there's one key word that, that really defines um, who we are, um, Jeff, and that's the word um, growth. Um, a lot of firms talk about growth. Um, you know, Satera has five different communities where we drive growth. And so you're not one of 18,000 um, you're one of, uh, of a thousand to two thousand within five different verticals. And so, you know, if you want a direct affiliation model, um, we have Satara advisors. Um, if you want to be part of a community, we have these entities within Satara advisor networks where they are literally 10, 20, 50, 80, hundred million dollar entities where, you know, you can tuck in and be part of a community and then have everything taken care of for you. Um, as if you were in a, a W-2 uh, or regional environment. We also have a really unique um, vertical called specialists. And that's where our friends who are CPAs and affiliated members who also manage uh, wealth management money um, join Satira Financial Specialists. And there clearly are people that are in the insurance space or newer to the business that want to be part of a branch network and so we've got 42 branches within Satara Investors that allows you to, to tuck into to actual physical branch spaces. And then finally, we have the second, I believe, the second largest uh, institution platform for banks and credit unions. And so, you know, the, the beauty of GenStar is they, they, they fully capitalized Satara Financial Group, the umbrella company, and then within five different communities, you know, you're important. You've got a voice at the table. You, you have access to the presence of each of these communities. Um, and you're just not a rep number, right? And, and I, I, but again, I don't want to, everyone says they want to grow. Um, you know, we made a pivot to quality, Jeff, last year. And, and we really put a stake in the ground. And we're not for everyone. Like, really no interest in concentrated annuity books or TAMP books or direct books. We're competing at the highest level for high quality advisors within all five of our communities that have balanced books, that have an advisory focus. But more importantly, you got to want to grow. I, I've never been at a firm that is so focused on growth. Um, and that's the beauty of, uh, of GenStar and, and their uh, equity investment. Grow, growth in what way? Okay. Yeah. Don't, don't give me any big jargon. Don't, I don't want any jargon, John. How, how's an advisor grow in Centera? Be specific with me. Growth is personal, right? Growth could be, I want to buy practices. We close 418 different transactions. We'll help you buy practices. Growth is, I want to double my business by leveraging um, marketing and new websites and SEO. Um, growth is personal in terms of, you know what? Uh, I've been stuck at 500,000 for 10 years. I need to break through. I need to engage a growth officer or a business consultant and actually really do a business plan and execute on my KPIs or my daily activities. Um, you know, growth is, growth may be, Jeff, when you're 74, I don't know why you ever leave the business, but maybe you want to work three or four days a week, you know, not, you know, not five. But here's the key growth driver from a recruiting perspective, and it's very unique. Wait a minute, did you just read my book that I want to write, John? Why would someone ever leave the business? Why would you leave? Exactly. You build a team around you so that you don't have to leave, so that you can be that mentor and lead the younger generation. But go ahead. I interrupted you. Why would you leave? So here's the key growth driver, and we're the only firm on the street that does this. 70 plus percent of our recruiting last year went to our large entities. So within Satara Advisors, Satara Advisor Networks, Satara Financial Specialists, we go out and we use GenStar's Capital to recruit people onto our advisors' teams. So most recruiting teams in the industry want direct affiliation because it's more profitable. We know that if we recruit and help you recruit, you're going to grow your enterprise value, 
you're going to grow your client base, you're going to double your business quicker than anybody else. And so again, unlike other firms, we help our existing entities grow through recruiting, not using their capital, but by using GenStars. And so they're still independent. My team, the business development team, the, the, the advisory consulting team that works on all of our, our fee-based business and our growth officers, all three of our teams work in concert to help you grow. And, and again, as you think about recruiting, Jeff, um, most firms don't want to build the enterprise value of entities. They want to keep everyone separated. Um, we have just the opposite viewpoint. We know that if, if we recruit to our larger groups or anybody that wants to recruit, because you know, Jeff, recruit is a contact sport. You, you got to be committed to it. You got to be dedicated to it. You have to do it daily. And if you're not committed to it, you're never going to recruit. Those so, that want to recruit, we're, we're, we're all in. So, so I will, I'm interested in Sutera. Am I coming in under a larger entity or am I going to be that larger entity and, and you're going to help me recruit into my larger entity? Your call. We, we um, unlike other recruiting teams on the street, my team is agnostic to channel. You know, we want to understand what are your goals? What are your dreams? What are your ambitions? What's important to you, your team, and your family? And then we're like, okay, you know what, Jeff? So you, you may come in and be and, and affiliate with Satera Advisors Direct, and then we're going to build around you, right? right? Or you may say, you know what? Um, I'm from a wirehouse or a regional. I'm too afraid to be totally independent. I want to tuck in to an existing enterprise. We can do that. So, so um, you know, it, it's up to it's up to the individual recruit and what are her goals, right? We. we uh, again, the beauty of being at Satera is that um, we are agnostic to our community or our verticals. So, uh, do you know PH, John? PH. Yeah, PH is that this kind of I call him a lazy advisor. Earns about five hundred thousand. He's out surfing most of the time, and not not working his client base. Not, I mean, he's he's lazy. I. I I'm embarrassed in the industry to know to be in the same industry as PH um, because knowing the disservice that, that he uh, he gives to his clients because he's not working at it. He's not he's not breaking things to make him better and whatnot. But PH still makes a half million dollars. He's kind of won the lottery. I don't want to work that hard. I want to come to Satera. I want to earn 500000 What's my payout? Are you, are you even interested in bringing me in if I'm not willing to grow? Or what if I'm at Satera and I'm that guy? What's my payout? See my point, my, yeah. So let me just leave yeah, it. There. No, it's, it's, it's a great, it's a great point. And, and so I, I think the question really is, um, you know, you bring up a succession plan kind of question. You, you, you know, you're so we, we kind of got, you, you know, you're talking. PH is a coaster, right? PH is just, you know, fat, dumb, and happy. And and it, and the question really is, do we want to try to get a a younger teammate um, to help mine the bottom half of that book? to help see growth. Um, you know, uh, do we want to, to do a couple different things from a succession plan perspective? So you may have read um, recently that um, Satera recently acquired Bar Financial. It's a, a uh, I can't, well, it, it's a, you know, more than $60 million entity and the founders wanted a liquidity event. And instead of leaving, you know, Satera bought them. Um, we're also buying sleeves of existing businesses. So if PH says, Hey, you know what? I want to make 500 grand, but I'm willing to, to carve off 30% of my book. We can bring in a new advisor and have him or her grow that book. They'll get a little bit of a liquidity event. Um, and then all of a sudden, you know, PH is 500 actually probably goes to a million because the book is being worked. Um, we're never going to force PH to leave the business or, or get out. But I agree with your viewpoint that, that, PH is doing a disservice to his or her clients uh, because they're not engaged, right? And you see that with at the wirehouses where the average age is in the mid 60s, and the data shows very clearly after age 63, assets and production go down every single year. So there are some firms that are on the death spiral unless they grow, um, and I'm not sure how they how they get out of it, which is why they're you probably see more M and A and consolidation down the road. So. Does Satera, on example, PH, does does his 
are her admin fees keep increasing by not growing? How does that typically work and range for? Yeah, no, great payout. question. I, I didn't really ask your payout question because payouts, um, it depends on how you affiliate, right? So if you affiliate with Cetera Advisors um, directly with home office supervision, you know, there's a payout range um, that, that, that doesn't change. It grows as you do more, um, but it's not, it's not a penalty box like the warehouses. Um, if you decide, hey, I want community and I want somebody else to take care of everything else for me. So I want to join, you know, Jeff Crosby's network and Jeff Crosby's getting a payout in the high 90s, but it's only going to pay out that advisor at the high 80s, let's say. And then you keep the differential for your overhead. So the, the payout question really depends on, on where you affiliate um, and what service model makes sense for you, right? And, and is that dependent upon that enterprise within Cetera, what that payout would be? If, if, if I'm a producer, if I'm a W-2, I kind of want my independence, but I also want to be under someone. Do I come in under someone at Cetera, the bigger enterprise, and I negotiate a payout with that entity? Is that how that would work? Yeah, so could work? A, yeah, it's a great question. Um, so the larger enterprise has their payout. Um, and then, um, you know, we work with the larger enterprise to get a fair payout for the one that is tucking in, um, uh, assuming that, all right, here are all the support services the larger enterprise is going to provide for you. You know, your office space and your computers and your letterhead and your admin service if you need it, or obviously supervision and technology. So um, it really just depends. But, but in essence, you, you've got a direct payout model. Um, you also have a, a larger entity model, which actually happens in both Satera Advisors um, and, and networks. And then, um, you, you know, you pay, you, you pay a little bit for the convenience of not having to deal with finding your own office space, finding your own computers, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Outstanding. So it seems like then in summary that this whole COVID-19 has caused us to work from home. It's caused us to be independent. And you're saying that now we're all basically independent because we got to learn that. And, and I would imagine if you're going to be independent, you're suggesting, well, rather than getting a 35 or 40% payout, why don't you consider an alternative potentially like Cetera, where you have a lot of channels you can come into, a lot of opportunities because you're you're going to be independent regardless. And so um, consider us for if, if you want to grow, if you, you know, essentially don't ever want to retire, you want to keep growing your book, that, that get, get out of the walls of this, of the lower payout and the higher cost structure and come into an enterprise within Cetera where there's a lot of flexibility and options and that the advisor gets, gets to choose its own, their own path. And oh, by the way, we're a private equity firm that at, at a broker dealer like Cetera, we keep investing back into our broker dealer because we know the way to be successful is to see the advisors grow. And that's what that's one of the reasons we're willing to invest back into the advisors. I mean, what would you add? Yeah, no, look, I, I, I you, you you nailed it on the head. I, I think everyone owes it to themselves um, and their family and their clients to look at different independent options. And, and, I, and I say that for two reasons. Um, and, and Jeff, you know, 14 years at Merrill Lynch, big chunk of the Ameriprise. Um, I, I was a W-2 person for most of my career. Um, what I've learned, and again, I've learned a lot um, since I've, I've, I've been at Cetera. Um, what, I've, what I've learned is that people that are independent um, basically had the opportunity for two liquidity events. In essence, three. Number one, if you move from your current environment to another independent firm, you're going to have some transition assistance that will help you, you know, with your move. So that's liquidity event number two. The second liquidity event is as you build your enterprise value, wherever you go, right? And I, I think it's really important um, that this whole growth thing you, you need to make sure that the firm you affiliate with can deliver organic growth and inorganic growth. My job is inorganic growth, recruiting to a firm like yours. Um, and so, you know, we, we use a, 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 a third party's capital to grow your enterprise value, which again, will, increases your net worth. The most, the, the most valuable asset you have 
is your practice in 3x equity. It's not your house, right? And then the third liquidity event is your exit, right? You need to be at a, at a firm that will underwrite your exit when you choose to leave, whether it's a partial practice purchase, whether it's a total purchase of your practice, uh, whether it's a succession plan. The point is you don't want to be somewhere where you get 20% down and have to hope the check doesn't bounce the next three years. And so whatever firm you go to, make sure you can click off those three boxes. You know, are they valuing my business fairly when I move? Um, and fairly doesn't mean the biggest check on the street, right? Fairly. The second is, will they help me build my enterprise value? And third, will they unlock my enterprise value at a fair multiple? And, and with our bar transaction that we recently did, you just saw, you know, Satara putting words in action. So that, that's all. That's how. That's how I position it. I, I encourage everyone to kick tires in this environment. Why not get rid of your apathy? Um, take your head out of the sand. Look around. You know, the, there there is a way for you to to have an 80, 90 plus percent payout um, if you truly want to own a business and build your enterprise value and have growth. Okay. And I'm going to weigh in here, John, that's outstanding. I'm going to weigh in here as an advisor because um, I'm one of those as well out there. So here's the thing. I think as advisors, if you're not growing, you're kind of wilting. So you need to, you need to improve yourself. You, I, there's one of, one of the visions I have is if it's not broken, um, if it's not, if it's not broken, don't fix it. I mean, you got to break it all the time to make it better. So as an advisor, we got to, if, if we want to grow, if we want to sell our book for as much as we can, if there's a legacy, you got to break it to make it better. And so the way you do that is you got to bring on clients and bringing on clients is invigorating. There's like, there's this parable in the Bible that the more logs around each other, it burns hotter and it, it creates more energy. And when we bring on clients, it creates more energy for us as the advisor. So bringing on clients is a good thing. Growing is a good thing. And here's the deal. I got lucky. Microsoft chose me many years ago to be the financial advisor of choice for their employees. And, and, and so um, I'm still, I'm still trying to grow. I am growing. I've got, you know, ideas and things we implement um, as, as advisors out there. And um, you gotta, you know, you gotta motivate yourself, but, but here's the thing. Most people out there, they don't have advisors, no matter what the study said. Most people do not have financial advisors out there, certainly the people that I'm coming across. So if you want to grow, you, you got to be willing to ask the questions. Are you open minded to a second opinion? Would you be open if we sat down together? Would you be open if I shared my value proposition, how I can help you? So anyways, my point being, if you want to grow on the retail base, I most people don't have advisors. If you want to grow through acquisitions and whatnot, which 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 is a great way to grow, it sounds like Satera has a, a value proposition. So not sounds like they do. So if if the goal is to be able to sell your book for a higher value or create more value, you got to grow. Um, you got to grow through the individual client base and or you know acquisitions opportunities at Satera, and just keep breaking it to make it better. Improve yourself. And John gave some great examples. And to remind you, he's written some great articles with Forbes. They're on the Three X Equity website. If you want to access how you improve yourself, so John, I'm going to turn it to you. I have Zoom meetings with my team. Actually, they're team meetings every Monday and Friday. And your article showed me I need to be a better leader to my team. I need to invite them to bring their dog to our team. To your point, hey, maybe wear your favorite hat. What, what book have you read? So I'm really trying to engage my team to, to create empathy, you know, to get, get rid of some of this um, um, bent up um, feelings that we have from what COVID-19 has done is, you know, get outside ourselves. And, and, and the last thing I will say, too, in terms of developing ourselves is I'm trying to read more like John said. I, I, I saw where one of Bill Gates' top five books for 2020, and I read this one book. It's called Stretch, and it's a fascinating book, a range. It's called Range. And basically, it's, it's how 
he proved that a jack of all trades is not, or a, a specialist is not the way to be successful. A jack of all trades, kind of a generalist, had proven to be more successful. And it's and you use metaphors and you learn from other practices. You learn from other areas that you can incorporate in our practice. You might learn from your child's school teacher how they conduct the class, and you take that learning and somehow you apply that into your business, how you grow through individual clients. So it's a, it's a fascinating read and, and it's, it's, it's kind of, it challenges us to think out of our normal lane and it uses, if you're a sports fan, it uses two athletes as the example at the beginning of the book, Tiger Woods and Roger Federer two greatest in their sports. Tiger Woods learned how to golf at eight months old. Roger Feder, whose mother was a tennis pro, never picked up a racket till he was 16. He tried a lot of different things. And so anyways, I encourage you to keep breaking yourself to make you better as an advisor. If you're considering changing broker dealers, it sounds like Soterra would be a great option for the many platforms it has. If you're also interested in other broker dealers, other than Soterra, Sutera, come out to 3x equity and we can help you we can share with you the value proposition uh, of other broker dealers so again um, if you want to check out john's articles on Forbes, come out to the 3x equity website and if you have other questions in the industry or um, wanting to learn more about other broker dealers you can come out to us and we'll give you information anonymously so we are consulting in our industry to help you we know this space really well and i was honored and thrilled to have john at Sutera. Um, and I absolutely would convince, you know, encourage you if you are thinking of moving broker dealers, maybe Satera is not the final stop, but I absolutely would encourage you to consider Satera as one of your considerations for the things that John mentioned. It sounds like if you're willing to grow and you want to improve yourself, if you're wanting to be stagnant and be like pH, maybe not so much. So John, any parting words to the audience you'd like to leave them with? No, I, I think you hit the nail on the head, Jeff. Um, I, I would encourage all of us in this environment to, to truly be lifelong learners, um, to truly think about and be more empathetic um, with our colleagues and teammates that are, that are struggling. And, and uh, I'm going to pick up the book and read it. Um, I would tell you that if you really want to invest in yourself, um, you know, really pick up a book um, that, that – will help you think about emotional intelligence and self-awareness. Um, my, my sense is, you know, this environment, um, we're going to be in it for a while until we have herd immunity or, or mass vaccinations. And so um, while I, I see a lot of light at the end of the tunnel, I, I think that we have to do two things. Um, and you, you, you said it eloquently. You have to break glass to grow. Um, and, and you have to try to improve yourself because as you improve yourself, you're going to help your clients and your family, um, but you're also going to deliver, you know, growth in a, a sustainable uh, uh, manner. So I appreciate everything you do, Jeff, and I really thank you for, for having me on. Yep. And I want to address a little chat question that came in uh, from Mark as well. And I want to say who Mark's with. But Mark, I'll tell you that I, I get it and I'll forward that off to, to John, but not every broker dealer out there, it's not necessarily greener on the other side. It could be AstroTurf. So, you know, raise your concern to your existing broker dealer and see if they're willing to, to listen and hear and, and make those changes. But um, no one broker dealer is perfect out there. And um those broker dealers, if they're willing to listen to your concerns and improve upon it, what a great broker dealer to be working with. So um, I'd raise that one up the flagpole, Mark, keep pushing it. And um, if they change and, and improve it, then they're a broker dealer for life for you. So John, thanks a lot for your time. Thanks for your professionalism. Thanks for being a resource to the advisors um, out there and, uh, you know, to my colleagues as well in the field. Let's keep working. Let's keep doing for what our clients need. That whole robo model, uh-uh. They believe in us. They need us as a personal touch. They need us on these Zoom calls. They need us on these team calls. They need the interaction and, and be professional. You don't always have to be in a suit and tie like John, but again, this isn't a time to dress down either. Give your clients the utmost respect. Don't be afraid to ask for referrals and let them change someone else's life because they referred you as their advisor. So don't be afraid to ask the questions. Have it, have it out there because you're actually doing someone a big service by uh, 
helping someone if in fact you are committed uh, to your job and your industry. So thank you everyone. This will be on our, our website. Seek us out 3X Equity for any consultation or any help that we can um, help you with uh, along the ways. Blessings, John. Thanks, my friend. Take care. Bye-bye.